Yo, everybody, welcome back to the number one television show in the history of the world. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Power That Preserves, book number three in the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant by Stephen R. Donaldson. Now, I have previously reviewed... Book number one, Lord Fowl's Bane on the channel, and book number two, The Ill Earth War on the channel. This is book number three, and now we've got books number um, five, six, and seven. No, that's not right. Four, five, and six. God, I am bad at math and counting. This is the first trilogy. That's three. This is the second trilogy. It's another three, and so that would be book four, five, and six. Yes, that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's talk about it. This book came out in 1977, book number three. Book number two also came out in 1977. Book number one came out in 1977, too. An interesting fact about this trilogy is it was all released at the same time. Stephen R. Donaldson, this was the, these were the first books he'd ever published, and he wrote the entire trilogy from start to finish, before he uh, approached a publisher to publish him. So you know, that was a risk to write three big books like this with no promise of anyone ever giving a crap about it and publishing it. So that's that's pretty badass. That's pretty... Um, but it worked out, and they in the late 70s and early 80s, these books were some of the most popular fantasy books around. And uh, just a huge hit. So let's talk about the cover first. Um... Because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration, and all of these books were, this one was, a, that's a Daryl K. Sweet painting. It's got the green theme. Um, now, Daryl K. Sweet, uh, for those of you who uh, might remember the original Robert Jordan Wheel of Time book covers, that's Daryl K. Sweet did all those. Daryl K. Sweet did that cover also, and this cover, and in fact, he did these covers here too. So let's take a look at them all together. Because if we put all six of them together, they look um, pretty cool because they've all got a color scheme. You know, they've all got the color scheme going. That just looks super dope. I mean, I love when publishers just make it all look cool. And then, um, not only that, but when you put them on the... Uh, when you put them on your shelf together, they just, they all fit. They all look like they belong, you know? So good job, uh, Publishing House, for doing that. Let's put these here. Let's pull this book out again. Okay, so what is the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant? And why were they so popular? Well, they just were. I mean, back in the late 70s, early 80s, there wasn't a lot of fantasy books out there to read. So what few there were got read an awful lot. Including by me. Um, <clears throat> this is one of the first fantasy series I ever read. I think I read. I think I read uh, the Lord of the Rings, and then I read uh, the. I, well, I first read the Sword of Shannara, then the Lord of the Rings, and the Prydain Chronicles by uh, Lloyd Alexander, and then this this one came along right somewhere after that. So anyway. In the real world, so this is a portal fantasy where we take someone from our own world and plop them into a fantasy land, much like kind of like the Chronicles of Narnia or like Harry Potter going to Hogwarts. Well, Thomas Covenant, in the real world, he's an author and he um, is a famous author, but he has leprosy of all the diseases. He has leprosy. So he's kind of like a lonely outcast kind of guy. Like he doesn't hang around people a whole lot. So he's a little socially awkward. Well, anyway, he gets transported to this uh, fantasy land where his leprosy no longer exists. Things are like, it looks like he's entered Middle Earth. There's lots of creatures and different fantasy creatures and giants. And uh, it's a fantasy land. I mean, with all the fantasy trappings. And he thinks that he's just dreaming this, right? And the first couple books, he just thinks that those are dreams that he had. And yet, he in this book, he again, he is transported into this fantasy land. Like twice before, he had been summoned to the land, and it's just called the land. It's not called Middle Earth or anything. It's just called the land. Twice before, he's been summoned to the land. 
Twice before, he's uh, had to join with the lords of Revelstone. Revelstone is one of the big cities in the land. He's had to join with the lords of that city to fight against Lord Fowl. Lord Fowl is sort of like the big bad, sort of like the, um, the Sauron of the universe here. Um, and uh, each time that he's uh, transported into the land, he's reincarnated into this person that doesn't have leprosy. Uh, in fact, the people that live in the land, they think that he is their, the reincarnation of their ancient hero because he, wears his, he still wears his wedding ring, which is made of white gold, and he's called the white gold wielder, and they have prophecies about the guy that has the white gold on his hand and that is going to be their savior. So in book three, he's like, once again, he's transported back into the land that he doesn't even believe exists. He thinks it's all a dream, and he is... Um, has to fight against the evil enemy Lord Fowl a third time. Now with him goes a giant, character who's a giant, uh, one of the Blood Guard, uh, no, the Blood Guard are sort of a, a, an elite fighting force in Revelstone. And then he goes with, a, also he travels with a mad woman who he has wronged in the past, I won't, in the past couple books. And I won't tell you what he did or any of that. I won't spoil any of that. But, um, it makes for an interesting journey with the giant, the mad woman, and the blood guard. And we can actually see them all. These are all the characters. This is Thomas Covenant on the front. That's the mad woman, the giant, and the blood guard. And they're in, trapped in some sort of green magic. And uh, anyway, the overall feel of this book is very, very Tolkien-esque. Very Lord of the Rings. This is high, high, high epic fantasy. I mean, things are just absolutely... I mean, Stephen Donaldson is one of the better writers that we have in the fantasy genre, and, and his prose shows through. It's just really gracefully and elegantly written, especially since he was so young when he wrote these. And uh, it's just... You do feel like you are in... This is kind of... If people say, what two writers... What writers should I... If I like Tolkien, what writers should I read after Tolkien? I always tell them first... Dennis McKiernan, and then Stephen Donaldson, because they are the most Tolkien-esque of the Tolkien-esque type writers. So if you like that kind of high fantasy, elves, dwarves, monsters, talking trees, high magic, just evil lords trying to take over a fantasy world, magic talismans that can save you, weird golem-like creatures that are creeping around, things like that, this has all of that. All of that and more. And um, plus a dude that has leprosy. Well, he had, well, he's cured of, plus a dude from our world that thinks that he's dreaming the whole thing. And he's kind of got a bad attitude. Here's another thing that I should tell you about this series. It's very, it's kind of like the precursor to Grimdark. This is kind of like a, the dude in the, our main hero isn't really a hero. He's kind of the first anti-hero. He just, he kind of complains about everything that he sees and does all the way through. He doesn't even want to be there. He doesn't want to be doing any of this stuff. It's kind of like, that's kind of one of the reasons this book is, this series is so beloved yet so controversial is because the main character is just a seriously unlikable dude. Um, reluctant hero for sure. I mean, not just reluctant, but like just obstinately reluctant. He just does not want to help out anybody <laughs> but he just kind of does anyway the power that preserves book number three in the uh, chronicles of thomas covenant uh, just one of the great classic fantasy series of all time um a great great ending to this trilogy but left open for more trilogies i give it a nine out of ten just super good and that's that